What is going on journalists? Irvin Felix John here with the fitnessjournals.com. If you guys are new here, make sure before we go on, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And all my returning journalists, smash the like button. So what we're talking about today is, why is it that a lot of calisthenics athletes, they can stay lean and they don't really have a diet? I mean, I'm speaking for myself and a lot of guys I know. We don't count calories, but we can stay lean. Why is that? How is that even possible? Three, yeah, yeah. two, one, go. I was about to say this is a typical breakfast, but it's not because I usually don't eat breakfast. What? You usually don't eat breakfast? That's right. So we've got some waffles. Yeah, I could have um, made, could have used this. 15 grain. But I'm filling for a little something else. Guys, you asked me about my diet. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. Squeeze it up because I'm going and work out hard. I still got the eggs under there, uh, naked, so I could look good naked. Let's chow. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is lean body mass. What is it? Uh, basically, muscle, bone, connective tissue. What people usually tend to confuse it with, they say fat-free mass, but technically, uh, no, that doesn't apply to any living human because even within the bones, we have, we have uh, fat, so it's not fat-free mass. So when it comes to living people, fat-free fat mass technically doesn't apply. So how do you, can you increase resistance training? When we're looking at resistance training, the number one way to increase fat, not fat free mass, lean body mass is through resistance training. So resist, resistance training does contribute to hypotrophy and in return, that would make sense that it also alters your body composition. Uh, studies show and common sense show that if you're doing resistance training, it will increase lean body mass and it will decrease fat. That sounds like common sense, right? Oh, almost got hit there. All right, so yeah, that, it, it, like I said, it's, it sounds like common sense, but I'm not gonna insult anyone's intelligence. I wanna make sure that you guys understand what I'm saying there. I'm looking for my location. Hopefully I didn't pass it yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get in. So, uh, guys, I, I, I'm not, I wasn't being lazy. I had to record, so now I'm actually gonna be in it. We're gonna continue the the muscle video in a second, though. I'm gonna cut the video right now because I don't want to get um <laughs> stripper with the dollar tip son buddy. Which chocolate city is fine. I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying. Let's make sure we know what we're selling here. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. Girl. 
girls. <laughs> if they did that, they get now let's talk about the answer. So when doing calisthenics, the most resistance that you experience naturally is your own body weight. And as a result, you can perform higher volume. So I, I broke this down in another video. I'm talking about psychoplasmic hypotrophy and myofibular. I'm gonna link it right here or in the, in the um, description below. Higher volume training burns more calories than lower volume training. Duh, right? On top of that, resistance training, uh, it will encourage energy expenditure during recovery periods. So in between sessions, your body will be burning a lot of fat. The more resistance training you perform, the more lean mass will be increased, but more specifically, lean muscle, muscle mass. Uh, as a result, what will happen is your metabolism will increase and your overall ener energy expenditure will increase. Now, the next very important question is why? So, muscle tissue has a high metabolic rate, which fat does not. Resting energy expectancy of muscle is high. All in all, more muscle mass results in more calories being burnt while at rest. For every pound of muscle gain, you'll burn approximately, what, 35 to 50 uh, additional calories per day. So yeah, guys, on the real, if you want to expect to gain, let's say five pounds of muscle mass, it could take you a pound, a, a, about 10 to 20 weeks of performing high resistance, high volume. So I'm, when I say high resistance, we have a video on that, but I'm just gonna explain really quickly. High resistance, additional weight, putting additional weight on you, um, high volume reps and sets. High volume reps and sets, sarcoplasmic, well, that's in a video, whichever side the card is on or look in the description below. So guys, that is the key. Um, if you don't have a diet, like I said, ask one of your favorite calisthenics athletes. And I'm not saying like a diet, there's anything bad about a diet. My whole thing is if you don't want to follow a strict diet, this is probably the best way for you to have that type of benefit. Uh, keeping lean, maintaining a lean body. without having to constantly count calories because us as calisthenics athletes, our goal isn't to like get on stage and you know, have the best physique. But if we wanted to, given if we took those 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 steps to become a, a physique competitor, it, I don't think it would be too hard. Look at my boy, Akeem Supreme, like he's on stage. He started with the calisthenics thing. Yes, he was doing both the weight and the, the calisthenics, but calisthenics was his main avenue for building that foundation, given he got phenomenal genetics. but. Let's not take away. Dark Knight, for example, too, phenomenal physique. And these guys started with calisthenics. So really that is it, guys. If the video was informational, if it helped you in any way, please hit the thumbs up. Share this with a friend. If you like the Brain Gain series, let me know. I got a lot more lined up. Uh, I'll just post them. That's it, guys. Health is wealth, get money. Shout out to the journalist fam. We out of here.